Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to witnessing me participate in the best job in the universe where we're about to wreak a path of destruction upon the world thanks to a cod. Because holy damn, a cod makes the ranged attacks of immortals, or at least immortals do full damage to cities. Whether or not that's the ranged attacks, we'll figure that out. But the combination of a cod plus having a melee unit is going to put us into an incredible position when it comes to oh my god the ranged attacks do full damage uh wait do they hold on no they don't so i will have to smash the city with my units fully Ooh, that makes my life quite difficult now that he has walls up um that's terribly annoying and the fact that he managed to get a crossbowman in here too is frustrating and i don't have a great general let's pay the money to unlock Diplomatic League and plug in Strategos. We definitely want to get as many kills as possible. And pillaging districts also brings down the combat strength of the city quite a bit. Well, 11 strength versus... Maybe we are doing full damage to the walls. It's just that the the ranged attack just doesn't do that much damage. Four defenses. You're going to have to pop back to heal. And um, we can do this. It's just going to be a process of getting enough immortals. And keeping the immortals that we have alive. That's the thing which probably means preemptively falling back so we can cycle immortals in and out of the city's combat range. This immortal is a little bit dead unless I have a pillage or something. So why don't you, well, the most effective thing I can do with this immortal is unfortunately smash the city to break the wall slightly. Then we're going to retreat a tile with our immortals to keep them alive because until I have a great general, we're going to struggle. We can get Boudicca, so let's get that classical era great general. And now she shall provide an, ex an extra plus five combat strength for my um, immortals, which will also give them movement speed, which is perfect. So all of that gold actually paid off quite well. And we're going to be selling off our luxuries to be able to get gold in the bank. Take a little bit of damage on an immortal. That's okay. Pop him back to heal. You pop you forward. You step in there. We're going to keep producing immortals and warriors. And we're just going to spam immortals until we're able to take the city. Uh, we'll slowly, slowly damage the walls. We're just going to play it slow because we, we don't have a critical mass of immortals to throw into the fray. So by slowly chipping away at that city, we will get value out of the immortals. And by keeping our immortals alive, we'll slowly chip away at his capability of fighting. Now, we do have a little bit of a crossbowman problem right there. We also just got games and recreation. Let's blast you. I'm going to step you one tile to the right with the general you're healing on this tile you're fighting you're fighting we have an immortal coming out in the capital i do think we go for free inquiry again just because it's better um, and soon we will start producing catapults because we do have the great general to uh, to support them uh, you have the movement speed to get a nice shot in there that's perfect so now it's just a, it's just a matter right now of building enough critical mass to actually take these cities and making sure that the city can't get a chance to heal itself she wants peace, but I refuse to take peace because I have to get kills here to, in order to get value. I need to snowball by killing. I will vote for myself twice, and otherwise I don't care which religion benefits from anything else. I'll just vote for Catholicism because it's the top one. New districts built by me act as culture bombs. There's a crossbowman on this tile. That's amazing, actually. So we do get that kill. Oh, a little bit of a map jump. Plus two error score for killing a unit near Boudicca. Another immortal is popping out of here. And we are slowly but surely establishing the level of power that we need. Okay, what does this crossbowman do? Okay, he's staying where he is. Could do a miss military emergency. I don't care about military emergencies right now, so I'm going to leave that. It would be awesome if we could participate in them, but I don't think I can fight a multi-front war yet, war yet. And I don't want to be at war with Gilgamesh at this exact moment. I will take a friendship with Gilgamesh just to buy me more time. And I'm going to take a friendship with Suleiman as well. Now, you have a promotion. I'm going to go ahead and take the Tortoise promotion on you. You already have Tortoise. So I'm going to take the Battle Cry promotion so we can get down to Commando. Because plus one movement on melee units is actually a big deal. Now, we'll, we'll be able to make an assault, I think, next turn, depending on what this crossbowman does. Ooh, there's another crossbowman here that we need to deal with. We can deal with those. We also have catapults as an option. So I'm going to start getting catapults because I have enough units, even though production is quite low in here. Um, there's something to be said for getting a builder to try to improve that production. We do have the capability of increasing production in here. Quite a bit, actually. We definitely want to hurt this crossbow. If you attack, you will level. The crossbow won't be able to kill you because you do have the tortoise promotion and you will lower his damage. Perfect. So let's advance with the leveled cross, uh, leveled immortals. And we want to get rid of the crossbows because those are the units that can do damage to us on the assault. Um, we just want to tap the city so that the walls can't be repaired. That's kind of the objective there. The city of Susa will continue to produce immortals because that's what its job is going to be. And we 
now have engineering, so we should potentially look to go for machinery to get crossbowmen up, and then maybe even trebuchets. We're three techs from trebs, so I think we might go the treb direction here. So if we could get our hands on a little bit of money, maybe we could buy a watermill, which would be cool. How much damage could we do? We could almost break the city if we advance on it. We can break the walls at least, so let's do that. One attack, two attacks, city walls get broken. You're going to step forward and shoot the spearmen. We need to get rid of the units. The units are the thing that threaten us, realistically. So if we can get rid of those, it's way better. Let's drop another immortal. Awesome. Our army strength is now starting to scale up. We'll start to snowball soon. I'm going to put mines on the tiles that aren't adjacent to the city center. I also want this tea online, so why don't you go get that tea for me? That's another plus two gold per turn. And my gold per turn has been actually carrying me pretty hard here. All right, we took a little bit of damage off that spearman, but we did survive. There's another crossbowman to the north. Would love to get a promotion on you. Kind of need... Yeah, let's take the tortoise promotion, actually. And you'll take the battle cry promotion, because it really does actually give us a lot of combat power to be able to do that. Defensive tactics, we're going to grab that next for the governor title. That seems perfect. We have envoys in the bank. We're going to... I'm going to just keep feeding envoys into a CAD because I really need to keep control of them. In terms of pillaging, it would be nice to pillage a little bit. We'd also like to just break Kutasi if we could. So do we want a safe attack? Do we want a melee? I think we're going to just like do a little bit of safe attacking right now to farm experience. And then maybe next turn we'll look into smashing the city. But like really we're just trying to get a little bit of XP on these guys, keep them alive and, and play, it, play it fairly safe right now. Right? The mortal took a little bit of damage, as is expected. Why don't you advance? He does have pike and shots, but we are quite good against pike, or, or rather pikemen. But we're, we're relatively good against pikemen. You will be able to come become an immortal soon if I have the gold. Let me sell off some Diplo favor. There's 63 gold, and then another immortal comes online. So we've got quite a few immortals, quite a few. You have a promotion. Let's take the tortoise. Um, we will continue to blast the city. It's not much health. Um, the city is recovering slightly more health this, like, per turn compared to what the damage we're doing. Um, but we are getting there. You're going to start a warrior. I just need a constant stream of immortals. All right. So he's tr she's trying to defend and retake the city. We're in a relatively good position. Units need to be defeated as a primary task. Take out that crossbow and continue to advance. I'm going to move my general one tile to the left so that it'll provide its benefits to other units around here. And these pike and shot, or these pikemen, rather, they need to be softened up. So that's the real power of the Immortal, by the way. The fact that it's a melee unit that can do its damage at range really takes it from being like just a good, you know, strong swordsman type unit to being just absolutely incredible. So you're going to step back. You're going to take up that frontal position. You're going to move here. You're going to keep damaging the city. Keep damaging. You're moving forward. All three of you are going to blast this guy to try to bring him some semblance of, of you know, not justice, but like making him pay for what he's done. Which I guess is kind of like justice. Let's get to work on construction because it leads to trebuchets. I definitely want trebs. I definitely want machinery too. In fact, I might even just start machinery right now um, because it would just massively benefit me to have a pair of crossbowmen backing up my army to do damage to units. Let's go ahead and drop the mine. There's apprenticeship. And it's a 2-2 production tile. And the city is still growing slightly. We are low on amenities because we're selling all of our amenities, but that's fine. I'm going to start the advance across the river because I would like to see if I could maybe get this trader and this mine pillage. Keep blasting the city. We're farming so much experience here and that's going to really stand to us as the game continues. Take a moment to heal. You blast him. Um, Great General is fine where he is. And then I want to put a mine over there. Crossbowman just popped out of the city. So we will have to deal with that crossbow. Massed fire upon him should do the trick. So let's do one shot, two shots, three shots, and four shots. You get onto that mine, you're going to plunder that trade route. That's a hundred gold. Really, really helpful to be getting gold from our pillages right now. Now the city is under siege, so it's no longer recovering health. The pikeman out of nowhere is kind of scary. Let's, let's finish this city, I think. So attack, attack. Can you get that kill? Can you, you can just set him up to get that kill. You pillage, you get the kill. This will also promote you. And we have captured the city of Kutaisi. And because it's in between my cities, we got it under control. So step one in the war has begun. Let's go ahead and repair the monument, then the granary, then the watermill. In fact, it would be cool to finish the watermill because I think that would boost. Oh, we already have the boost for that. Okay, awesome. So monument, granary, watermill in that order to get the city back under control. Mission accomplished. Well, step one of the mission. Oh, we need to get rid of this warrior because he's threatening an iron mine and we need that iron. This crossbowman also needs to be dealt with. And her 65 signs per turn is being broken. The good news is she did, she does have districts in here that we do find useful, mostly the holy site. And there is a religion actually that she founded 
for warrior monks and meeting houses, which are not bad at all. So you're going to go ahead and take commando. So now you're a four move unit. You're also going to take tortoise. So you're better defended against range attacks. You're going to move up to here. You're going to move to here. You're going to promote with commando. So my units are slowly becoming super, super powerful. We need to get rid of you. This crossbowman stepped up into a danger zone, which means he's about to get obliterated. Awesome. So now we should be able to take on this city. He'll be ha he'll have a re she'll have a really hard time reinforcing it, which works amazingly for me. Um, I think it would be good for me to switch. Well, no, I should just keep making immortals and catapults. I think I'm gonna go for a, another catapult. I think catapults are gonna speed up how quickly we break these cities, particularly when we eventually get to war with Sumeria. There's like a really nice empire here that we can absorb. We are gonna be keeping a card as a friendly old place that we don't destroy. We do need to unlock currency. That's going to be part of it. We'll probably need to get a trade route. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and buy a trade route in my capital because part of the, part of the fun idea I had this game was to try to build a giga capital and start doing it early. So let's do a mine right there. There we go. Another high production tile. I'm going to tell my city to work that higher production tile because we're a little bit light on production right now. I'm wondering, can I purchase luxuries? I can. Now, the good news is she declared war on me, which means my, um, my taking of these cities is not causing many grievances. So that's super useful. Now, the thing is, immortals do have a little bit of an expiry date technologically, uh, which is kind of a funny sentence to say. <laughs> uh, let's plunder another trade route. You shoot there. And now we can start to get to work on sieging down this city. I'm going to give Byzantium open border so she can get this warrior out of my face uh, because it's kind of, well, you know what I do actually? The best thing to do is probably just to buy that tile and then teleport that warrior so I can just start moving my immortals where they belong. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of repairing, a little bit of putting back our empire. Well, I mean, it's not our empire, but we conquered it. I'm going to trade with Kutaisi here because I get two food, two production, two gold and a culture here from my internal trade routes. That's part of the power of Cyrus is that plus two gold and plus one culture for routes between your own cities. It's not an amazing bonus, but it does mean that I'll be able to like pump up this capital city quite a bit in terms of food production and all that jazz. We're going to go ahead and take Arrowstorm on this defending archer. There's defensive tactics, which should have given us an extra governor title. We're going to go ahead and take Pingala. We're going to give her him the connoisseur promotion for plus one culture per turn. We're going to put him into Pass Sargaday to scale that up. We're going to put Victor into Kutaisi. You're taking a little bit of damage, but that's kind of part of the goal. Break that catapult. You move all the way up here and break that catapult. Awesome. Let's, oh yeah, that's a, that's a nice bit of damage right there. Um, let's make sure we're getting our promotions, right? You move forward, you move forward, blast the city. You could melee the city. I think we'll wait a little bit on that. Get your battle cry promotion. So I don't think we need to kill Georgia fully. It'd be really annoying to attack through here. But there's definitely like these three cities, these two extra cities here are super easy to take. Then we can turn around and attack um, Sumeria because he has no military and he's focusing all of his production on like non-military things. I don't even know what he's doing with his military. Maybe he's at war. Maybe the barbarians down here are messing with him. Uh, regardless, if we don't kill Sumeria, it's a mistake. We have 18 turns to turn around and kill him. Now you might, you might say like, oh, getting a friendship with him was a mistake. But I think it was the right move at the right time. Or at that time, it was the right move, rather. So move you forward. I'm going to move you back to the city to heal. You're going to heal right there. I want you to heal. I've got a builder who's trying to run around repair things. You're in position. Let's get rid of the units before we do anything else. You're going to fortify because you're the one under attack. Then you start blasting the city. What I want to do is try to get the city under siege. So we'll just slowly chip away at the walls while we work on that. The first catapult is out, by the way. So I'm going to move my great general to the right for a turn so I can move this catapult to the front line slightly easier. Um, I'm going to finally get my government plaza. I think it's a necessary thing for me to do. I'm going to put it right here on that mine. I know that was a mine that I was using, but it's, it's time to get the government plaza in my capital. We have enough military built to where we should be able to conquer a decent chunk of land um, while we build a little bit of infrastructure. You move forward a tile. Um, catapult. Let's move you out. The catapult is the priority unit that I need to move around my empire. Get that kill. Uh, you're going to take your battle cry promotion. You're going to move to here and then shoot him. Keep on blasting the city. You stay fortified because you're tanking. Uh, repair this. So we do have now the dyes industry in Kutaisi. I can move my great general another tile to the left. Provide bonuses. Good job. He's tanking. So he's, he's net taking two damage per turn by tanking this. Move here. We definitely want to pillage these tiles. I don't think I'm going to bother pillaging the holy site because I don't have anything to spend faith on. You're staying fortified there. You're moving up to fight. You're moving up to fight. Uh, we will slowly chip away at the city. Not my Chippewa. Let's move you to there. All right, we're blasting the city. 
blasting, we're pillaging, we're blasting, we're blasting, we're blasting. Um, I would like maybe another trade route. Let me just I need to build like a little bit of infrastructure because my empire is um, stagnating slightly. So I just need to build up that little shred of infrastructure to keep me going. Okay, annoyingly, that catapult just got blasted, which means I now have to break the walls because of feckin'. Uh, this is super annoying, a military emergency. However, it could work out in my favor if it gets people to declare war on me. No, it looks like the military emergency failed, which totally is fine. I hate that this catapult just got blasted, so we're gonna have to pull him back. Let's break the city walls. So the city walls are now broken, and any damage we do... Now, the city only gets one shot back. I think we just do, like, a little bit more chip damage. And this city should fall next turn. Awesome. We've got the city under siege because we have all of the available tiles that the city can access uh, occupied with zones of control. We're going to kill this crossbow. We can actually maybe uh, do something cute here. Oh, no, I won't be able to quite do that, but you can get that kill. Uh, you're ready for a promotion. You're not ready for a promotion. You're close to a promotion. Can you make this work? Come on, get that kill. Oh, you jerk. Okay, I'm just going to take the city. Even if it's slightly suboptimal, we will keep it. Loyalty is fine, because we just we just have a really easy time maintaining loyalty when you're playing Persia. Monument, water mill. Get those repairs going, uh, and then go for the granary, because we just need to build up that infrastructure. We will take Rastavi, and then peace out Georgia. I think that is the play. She has a bunch of signs coming from somewhere, which I don't fully understand where, but that is what we will do. Nice. There's machinery, so we do have access to crossbows now. And importantly, siege towers if we want to use them. Although with a card, we don't need them. Uh, we're going to make our way to construction and we want to get to military engineering so that we can get trebuchets, as well as access to nighters so that we could potentially transition into musketmen soon, which are the unit that kind of naturally follows on from an immortal, in my opinion. I think immortals are better than men at arms, so you're better off going straight to muskets. And some of these units are a little bit damaged, so we're going to let them, uh, you know, live more carefully. But... We have another catapult that we can bring forward to start blasting the city. And we did actually inherit a very nice campus here. That's a plus three. The city's cranking out 2.4 science, even when occupied, having massive negative loyalties and negative amenities. We have managed to grab the government plaza. We're going to go for the Warlord's Throne. Warlord's Throne will give us a 20% bonus production for every time we capture a city. And that will just scale and scale and scale. You, on the other hand, you're going to need to keep producing immortals so that we can feed our army. Um, the size of our army is going to be very, very important. And so that's definitely something we don't want to neglect. I think I am going to go Elves of Minerva this game, just because it kind of fits with my game plan a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get a trade route. Oh, no, sorry. I'm building the trade route in Kutaisi. That's okay. Let's take out Strategy Ghosts and we will plug in Caravanseries for gold because we're a little bit light on gold right now. And actually, Strategos is totally fine to leave, leave, leave in um, because we wouldn't mind getting a Medieval Era Great General. Now, people aren't going to like that I'm playing Elves of Minerva. But that's fine. Um, it was. I think it's the best choice for the situation I'm in and for the type of game that I'm playing. Uh, basically, this game I want to ask the question is like, what if the Persian Empire just never stopped expanding? So let's get over to the city of Rostavi. You will need a garrison to keep you safe. I'll probably do this. Um, I do want a unit to hold the pass here. Thankfully, I've managed to capture a builder, which will allow me to start repairing stuff. Right, let's move Boudicca one tile to the left. We can get one sneaky little attack in on the city to break the walls. And we can also continue to advance here. Hopefully this catapult will survive. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't. We are getting commando promotions on our units. Let's kind of sneak these guys up. Two guys should be able to hold that pass um, from any incoming nonsense. Um, so let's let's make sure we deal with the crossbowmen around the city of Rastavi. That's going to be more important than actually hitting the city, in my opinion, is you always want to deal with the units that make you, like, you get rid of the units first, uh, is how you should play things, in my opinion. In fact, actually, I think I can defend this pass with a single unit, so I'm just going to pop you right there. Um, this trader wants to go to Passagade, and then we want to trade with a card so we can keep getting envoys on there on a cooldown. You, as well, should probably keep producing immortals just so we have a lot of, like, so we have unit flow. Basically, we want to keep our army expanding because the more our army expands, the more people are afraid of us. And the larger our army is, the more combat we can engage in, the more losses we can sustain. The more losses we can sustain, the longer and more dangerous of a war we can engage in. So we just took a little bit of a pillage here to heal this immortal. I think what we want to do is keep moving units up. We really want to get rid of that crossbowman. Um, I want to take the promotion. I think I'll get the kill first and um, keep on blasting. 
you take a little moment to heal. You move up this way. Um, you should honestly, yeah, actually, I'm going to put this catapult in the city to heal because units heal faster inside cities. Units heal 10 health outside of your territory. They heal 15 health inside of your territory. They heal 5 health inside of enemy territory and they heal 20 health per turn inside a city. So it's it's quite a bit faster actually to heal units inside cities if they're very low on health. You kind of have to do the calculation like, is it worth it to move the unit one tile to get extra 5 health per turn healing? It's not always worth it. Now, we're going to go ahead and trade with a card. Even though this is an amazing trade route, the important thing is that it gets us envoys with the card. Lots and lots of envoys. I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to get started on barracks to get those finished uh, because now that we have a card, we're going to be getting scaling production from building our barracks. We've got plus one production, which doesn't seem like much, but when you combine that with the fact that the barracks itself has plus one production, it pays itself off in like 90 turns. And that will only start to pay itself self off faster and faster as we then start to invest into higher things too. So a barracks is quite a long-term production investment, but it's very early into the game. And so that will pay itself off over the course of the game. I'm going to move you here and shoot the city. Move you one tile left, shoot that guy can you move one tile left to shoot there you move one tile up shoot there you move one tile shoot so our goal is to just try to get as many units in range of this city to do damage to it as possible so that we take it down as fast as possible and then bring the great general up to provide combat bonuses usually it's a good idea to move the great general first but i always forget to do that i'm quite forgetful and i'm willing to admit that there is actually quite a few nice shops in this city and also in the city of kutaisi so i may move a i may move magnus to the city of Kutaisi so I can start chopping out stuff. Particularly when you're going for a war game like this, it's actually super important that you do chopping and that like you use gold to buy builders and chop and do things like that because everything you're doing is front loaded. So you need to get as much stuff as you can right now because the more stuff you have right now, the more cities you can take, the more cities you can take, the better you do. It's a very simple calculus when you're doing a war game. Everything is about now. It's about the short term. We're trying to reinforce that short term benefit. So we're taking quite a bit of damage. You're going to take the battle cry promotion to heal. Uh, you're going to smash. Well, you have a promotion, so I would like to take that promotion on you. I could smash the city with you. You also have a promotion. It's very important that I take these promotions because I need my infantry to be high health and highly leveled. Um, and then for now, rather than attack the city over the river, well, I will attack the city over the river to break the walls and then we'll attack one final time. So now the city is no longer shooting back, which is a great situation to be in. I still have my two archers that can become crossbows. So when I'm ready to boost that thing, that'll happen. All right, Builder, head over to Kutaisi to prepare, do a little bit of chop. And I will actually go ahead and buy a Builder. Although we're about to do Feudalism, which will give me plus two build charges on my Builder. So I think we'll wait for that. She still wants, she's still begging me for peace. She actually has really good science, but we should start to see ourselves snowballing. Let's go ahead and blast you. This city right here is just about ready to be broken. We're going to do, we want to save our melee attack. So I'm going to move you here, move you here, move you up. So I've got three non-river melee attacks. Let's take our shots first. One, two, and then move you up and take your shot. I'm going to move my great general one tile this way to provide combat bonuses to these other units. Let's attack, attack, attack. And can I get a promotion? You can get close to a promotion. Boom. Eastern Orthodoxy, all that stuff. So with these three cities taken, I'm actually super happy to piece out the Georgian Empire. I definitely want to get a monument in this city because that's a, a nice little bit of culture. We also may want to consider who our next target is. I think it has to be Sumeria. He's very close to me. He's got a lot of science and he's got a lot of tiles. Also a huge potential for pillaging and he has no military. Our friendship will break in four turns. It does suck that we have to kill Gilgabro, um, but he does own two capitals here and also like just a ton of really nice infrastructure that we could make use of. Um, and he's also, he's just like the easiest target from a loyalty perspective as well. And then we get to build like the really nice beginnings of the Persian Empire. This has to be one of the most fun domination games I've played in a long time. We have feudalism going. I'm going to drop caravansaries in exchange for serfdom. Then I'm going to take feudal contracts so I can continue to build units faster. We'll keep conscription going, except... Let's take the commando promotion on you. You're healing for a turn. You're healing for a turn. You're healing for a turn. You're healing. So it's going to take a little bit of time on some of these immortals to heal them. I will keep the great general nearby to sh shuffle the immortals to the front line. You keep going. I step this archer out of the way of the immortals so they can make their, their pathway. And we managed to grab ourselves another builder for free, which is awesome. So many immortals. And we just really want to coat the world in immortals. Um, it's quite important that we do that. So farms are now better if we have adjacent farms. I think it would be good for us to grab drama and poetry. Although infrastructure isn't like our strong point. But what we really need to get to, we need a lot of builders to get to nationalism quickly. So we're going to need that culture bonus. If we can make it happen. 
Right, let's sell off some of our luxuries. I'm going to sell these two luxuries to Gilgamesh for raw gold, um, which I think is better because I get to steal a whole bunch of his cash. We're going to chop here. There's another immortal coming out. We've already got a few immortals coming here. You keep killing that crossbowman. Let's drop the plantation there. Um, I'm going to quickly dip back for currency because being able to get industries would be really useful in the industries mode. We're also going to take a look at the city of Kutaisi. Um, would be good to squeeze out an extra builder here. Could purchase that with gold. I think I will because my builders are super cheap right now. And I need to also just keep like the immortal train going. I'm gonna, I, I would like to generate fewer grievances. So I'm going to put all of my Diplo favor into hopefully getting that reduced. Um, it's going to be annoying if that's not the case. And I would like to vote up militaristic city states. But I'm a little bit annoyed that I might get a... Okay, someone else got the grievances, which is I'm, I'm super okay with that. Let's peace out. Um, let's peace out Georgia. She's more than willing to give me a whole bunch of money and luxuries and all that stuff. Well, maybe I'll take the luxuries off and take more gold. But this is a super successful war. We took over another player's cities. We have a huge army, the biggest on the map right now, save Byzantium. And uh, we have a vulnerable enemy right on our border. Well, he's not quite our enemy. We have a vulnerable friend that we're going to uh, take it take, take to task. So there's an encampment. Let's build a granary. No, sorry, we built the barracks. Let's keep building immortals. That's what we need. We need, we need a flood of immortals. Let's drop the plantation. Super bad right now that we have a lot of war weariness. That war weariness should bleed away over time. Let's make sure that these forest tiles are owned. So what do I want to chop out? I think chopping out more immortals is fine. It could also be good for us to chop out some horsemen, but I didn't actually find any horses this game, which is, I don't want to say frustrating, more just like concerning that I don't have them. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and just chop out immortals. I think that's a good move for my empire overall to, to chop tiles to get what we need in terms of military. Brilliant. So we got the Warlord's Throne, which is giving us a 20% production bonus for all cities. Uh, whenever we conquer an enemy city, let's go ahead and get the barracks in the capital. But we would also like to get ourselves a builder in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and purchase that builder. Because one thing that we need to start doing is building up our infrastructure, especially when it comes to things like commercial hubs. Um, we also want the capital city to grow quite a bit. So I'm going to get started on granaries in here. Um, most of my other cities are going to be like supporting my war effort. But places, oh, like, look at this, a library plus three science library. We absolutely have to get that three sciences in an insane upgrade for seven turns worth of production on a single city um, compared to just getting another immortal. Yeah, so we're, we we need to start like balancing, expanding our military. We don't yet need the Gilded Vault, but the Gilded Vault is an awesome building actually. Um, so I don't think I'm going to bother unlocking it just yet, but basically it gives you culture equal to the gold adjacency bonus of your uh, commercial hubs, which is a really great thing for us because it'll help us get to the really, really important per um, nationalism tech and the uh, mobilization tech and fascism which is going to be how we win this game right going through those like really really important military civics so culture is actually kind of just as important as science when you're in a military game and that's why persia is a really good domination civ because they have such good cultural generation now i do think it is a good turn to surprise war gilgamesh now remember we are playing cyrus the great which means we have the fall of babylon so we get plus two movement for the first 10 turns after declaring a surprise war. So that's a huge bonus. We also get five loyalty per turn in occupied cities with a garrisoned unit. And critically, declaring a surprise war only counts as a formal war. So we don't need to denounce people before we kill them. Let's go ahead and get a friendship with Dido before we declare the war. We'll also get a friendship with Ottoman before we declare the war. So we want to keep people sweet so that we can trade with them. Then we're going to surprise war Gilgamesh. Sorry, Gilgabro. It's the only move that is available to me, which means we only take 100 grievances for that, which is nothing. And it also means as we capture cities, there's going to be less grievance pressure fighting back against our war party. Now, we are going to storm this empire. Blast. Boom, boom. Blast and blast and blast. Like that city is almost dead already. And now this army that was like kind of out of position should be able to make it to the front line incredibly quickly. Like insanely quickly. I'm actually getting frisian. Like just imagining the thousands of immortals just marching across the Persian mountains like with bloodlust like thrumming in their veins and the 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 slaughter that is coming is just going to be something glorious, right? There's apprenticeship. There's plus one production from mines. We also get access to the industrial zone. We're not going to make use of many industrial zones. However, if I go to the city overlap mode, there is like a critical strip, like the Reben hypothesis, of really nice um, cities here where we could 
any of these tiles, if we get a industrial zone in it, that's a five city industrial zone, which means once we get to the scaling factory, that's plus five, uh, that's plus 15 production, plus 30 production with power. Um, so we would love to get an industrial zone, just the occasional industrial zone sprinkled on your, on your, you know, in your empire is a bit like, you know, sprinkling a little bit of salt on your steak. You know, it just, uh, it enhances the flavor. Let's chop out that immortal. Then we'll scroll back down. We'll grab ourselves another immortal. We'll move you this way. Okay, let's blast a Shunna, move you forward, blast you, blast you, blast you. Then I will take a moment to break the city. Can I get it this turn? I think I can. So a Shunna has already fallen. Turn two of the war, we've got a city. Uh, loyalty, not even a problem. The storm is begun. Now, this city was coated in farms. These other cities are not coated in farms. They have these Sumerian ziggurats. Now, these ziggurats are actually going to disappear when we capture these cities. So what we want to do is we want to pillage those ziggurats rather than capture the city. So uh, this is another one of the really great benefits of being Persia. Because you get so much movement, you can actually do some pretty crazy pillaging uh, with your melee units, um, which is one of the, my favorite ways to play Persia. So let's go ahead and keep getting these... Um, Great generals moving up. The catapults are insanely fast. Immortals are popping out of Susa. Uh, would love to be making horsemen, but it's not viable right now. I think a couple of catapults would be cool. Um, but I think we want to be spending our iron is kind of like the thought that I have here. Um, and honestly, we could just build more immortals. But I think we want to go for Granary in here. This city has really bad... You know what, actually? This could be a Pingala city with all these farms here. This could be a really damn good Pingala city if we just built all farms in it and like made the giga growth city that's something for us to consider going forward um but right now i just want to get research around pingala because pingala is established in my capital so that's at least plus seven science which will bring us up to about 30 science per turn we do have a little bit of a science negative in here but yeah we're just trying to efficiently get stats uh, i'm going to go ahead and drop another pyrodiza boom you are going to go ahead and drop a commercial hub that's a plus four commercial hub right there uh two from the river one from the government plaza and then one from the adjacent district so that's fantastic and this will also give plus one gold to the adjacent uh pyrodesas so a lot of gold coming out of that commercial hub i do think a pyrodesa makes more sense on this tile so we are going to be retooling the landscape a little bit i want to be checking my cities to make sure they're not working bad tiles there's no more chops in the city of Kutis, Kutasi. So I'm going to move that to Akalaki and I will get myself a builder in Rustavi and I'll walk that builder over to here. But I really need, I need this unit to go away. So I'll buy that tile to kick him out and then I'll walk you over to here to get this T and then double chop the deer tile. Okay, what are we working in here? Let's have a look at Rustavi. So we're working the T, the T and the, the sheep. All perfectly acceptable tiles, in my opinion. I think we would like a Pyrodiza here, a Pyrodiza here, and a Pyrodiza here, just to continue to build up that culture and gold. Culture and gold, that's our thing. That's that's Persia's thing, is lots of culture, lots of gold. Lots of culture, lots of gold. Um, we want to vote this down. We don't want people to be declaring war on us. We can handle war now. We have a big enough army. But just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. Very important lesson that most people should learn, and not everyone does. Let's take a moment with these slightly hurt immortals to, you know, heal them up a little bit. There's nothing to pillage over here, so we could just get a little bit of damage on this city. We'll move you to there. And um, we're going to take the crew weapons promotion, so the catapult is slightly better defended. We're going to move you forward, blast the city of Ur, move you forward two tiles. You do have a promotion, and I prefer promotions over doing damage at this phase of the game, um, because experience pays off really well um, the earlier you get it. Get over to this ziggurat. You get to here. I want to pillage this trader as well. Um, you come there. You go there. Keep on storming ahead, my little immortals. Oh, it's so beautiful how far my immortals can run. Uh, let's go ahead and start repairing these commercial hubs. We definitely want that extra trader. I've got a, I've got an immortal holding the mountain pass up here. Should probably have another one on the campus eventually. Mostly just to prevent any potential surprise attacks. So we already have a dyes industry, which is giving a faith boost here. I think we could get a cotton industry in the capital. I think that would be nice. It's a nice production boost. Is that what we want to do here? I actually think that's fine. 30% military unit production boost could be really useful once we get this capital city up with like an encampment and stuff like that. Um, let's have a look. So who owns this cattle tile? It looks like it's owned by Kutasi, but I think we're going to break this and replace it with something. So I want to work this tile, this tile, this tile. I'm doing a little bit of tile customization. I'm going to lock this in because it'll be a Pyrodiza next turn. Okay, the city of Ur, we're going to pillage this. You're going to grab this trade route. Boom. Probably should have the raid card plugged in as well. Let's do that, actually. Where's Raid? There we are. Okay, so we have Conscription, Feudal Contract, and Raid. 
Um, okay, you're going to pillage this. There's 200 gold. And we can use that gold to fuel our economy. Okay, the city of Ur. We don't want to pillage the theater square. We're actually fine with that. Move you forward. Definitely want to be trying to kill units as a primary thing and preventing garrisons from getting into the cities. We want to kill anything that can shoot us and do damage to us without us being able to counterattack. And the city of Eridu will start getting spanked. We'll pop a little farm right there because it's a plus two food farm, which is twice as efficient as a basic farm. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a stable because I'm, I'm setting my capital up to be somewhere that I built siege units, actually, rather than military, like mainline military. So I think getting the stable will give me a 25% combat experience boost for siege class units. But I don't need that immediately. I can go for the water mill first and then maybe I can go for the commercial hub and start building up this. And I want the water mill because it's just a little bit of food, a little bit of production. And Persia is a little bit weak on the food and production front. So getting things like granaries and water mills actually really help this sieve out a lot. Uh, because it's a sieve that tends to work a lot of culture and gold. Uh, so managing your military like very efficiently is quite important. Let's grab the Pyrodiza right there. I think this volcano just erupted. Maybe. Yeah, it's erupting. But I, I I think I had to reload because of a misclick earlier. So I earlier in the play session, which you know maybe messed up the graphics or something. Let's move you to here. Shoot this guy. And we're dropping a Pyrodiza here. It's a lovely Pyrodiza. You will grow to it soon. Ooh, 15% science. This could be a really good science city, actually. It has a good campus. So I think the industry here would really help the city out in terms of its production. So we'll pop that in there. The deer tile is awesome. Don't get me wrong. We are going to need food in here. So maybe we'll take the um, the sheep tile, especially because we're close to getting feudalism, which does give you plus one food from your pasture improvements. OK, I think I'd like to take the city of Ur this turn. We're going to take the crew weapons on you. Um, let's make sure we get all of the pillages we want. Not enough movement. So we'll take Ur next turn. You move to here, you move to here, you move to here. So we've got the city of Ur completely surrounded, which means we don't need to be shooting it. Let's cross the river, get that kill. Can you get this kill? Let me just start thinking about what our next set of kills are going to be. City of Babylon is under siege. Why don't you move to there? You move up, shoot that city. Um, let's hammer the city of Ur, but we don't want to kill it this turn. So we'll just play it slow. Shoot, and you can move over here, shoot this guy. Definitely want to pillage the aqueduct. Aqueducts produce gold when pillaged. We could, in theory, pillage the theater square. I mean, it might be better to pillage it rather than try to keep it, but we'll see. Let's grab the granary and the water mill in Rustavi. Remember, Persia, weak on food and production. So those are things you need to kind of get to make these cities useful. Um, we're also not producing enough military. That's something we're going to have to get to work on. We're overproducing infrastructure right now, in my opinion, um, which is a problem we're going to have to address. I think a theater square here in the capital suits me really well. So I'll put a Pyrodiza right there. This is a fantastic Pyrodiza. It's adjacent to two of these things. I think I'll leave that mine right there. I think a Pyrodiza on this tile is fantastic as well. Boom. It's a little bit of gold. Maybe some culture. We can figure that out. Um, so the city of Ur, what is this worth? This is worth 111 culture. That's actually insane. So that's like three or four turns worth of culture. Let's go for recorded history. Pillage this and we'll basically one turn that. Anyone close to a level? This guy's about to level. So I'll take this city because when you capture a city, you get a big boost of experience. So it's good for units that are about to level to take them. Let's, I kind of want them to finish this theater square. So I'm not going to step on it to prevent construction. You're going to take your tortoise promotion. Um, the city of Eridu is never going to really be that good, um, in all honesty, but it's something we can make work, um, especially because it cost me very little to actually take the city. Move to there, shoot the city, move to there, shoot the city. Now we can put Babylon under siege, but that'll be the play. Let's keep the catapult schmoozen, schmoozen. Awesome. Brilliant. Cities under siege and the war continues. Let's go ahead and keep this city. Uh, we got more immortals coming out of the city. Would love to be building other things. Not an option for me right now. Need to keep the military score improving. Now, Eshnunna does not have much production, which means this city is not very good at actually making things. So I'll slowly get a water mill in here because it's like a 20% production boost to get that water mill. It, I think it would be really cool if you like owned someone's capital city, you get access to their unique infrastructure or something. I just, I feel like... That's a mechanic that I wish was in the game. I know there's Civilization Conquer mode, but that gives you all of their bonuses. Ooh, here's the thing. If you like conquer someone's... Ooh, it should be like, if you become culturally dominant over someone, you get to pick one of their bonuses. If you conquer someone's capital, you should be able to like assimilate one of their bonuses as well. I think there's like so many cool like little gameplay mechanics like that that you could put into the game that would really make things super interesting to play.
I don't know if they're going to finish this theater square because I didn't see construction go any further. The scaffolding didn't like advance, which you can see on buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and just like pillage that because it's worth 118 culture. Our goal now is to get to nationalism as fast as possible. So lots of culture is in our future. Now we did, I think, just head into a dark age, which sucks. But we're kind of in like not a bad place to do that. I will take a monumentality just because it's a, it's available. We will pillage for gold. Loyalty is bad, but not the end of the world. We can assign Victor to the city of Ur. We're also going to promote Victor with Garrison Commander for that plus four loyalty per turn towards my civilization in an AoE of nine, which means if I if I show you with the range finder, with the city overlap thing, and I go to nine range, and then I hit range and hover over the city that Victor is in, everything inside the white border are cities that he provides plus four loyalty to, which is just really, really helpful. Um, why don't you go ahead and pillage? We're going to pillage these farms for a little bit of healing as we advance. We may as well, even if it slows down our conquest slightly. Who's got a level in the chamber? You do. Can you get the city? Perfect. There's Babylon. Keep that city. Let's blast. Let's put Eridu on blast. You have a promotion. Take those promotions. Blast and blast and blast and. City of Uruk is on the cards. Quite exciting. We do have the option to go for Man at Arms now, um, but we can continue to produce Immortals because it's, it's a unique unit that is one step below Man at Arms. Although they may auto switch over to Man at Arms, which I'm maybe fine with we'll see maybe i shouldn't have researched apprenticeship it's whatever we'll finish military engineering we got one turn on that uh, we did just finish the library here so it would be cool to chop out another immortal uh, and get ourselves another trader although we could buy that trader with gold i think which we will do so we'll cancel this why don't you make me a builder um and we'll buy that trader with gold uh, maybe i'll buy the stable I'll buy the trader. Traders are better. Individual buildings aren't as good, I don't think, to buy. But the cool thing is, um, it doesn't cost any strategic resources to upgrade these guys to the next tier. Pillage, um, get onto that theater square, theater, uh, not theater square, sorry, the um, entertainment complex. Oh man, there's so much pillaging available here. Blast the city with the catapult, taking it down. Tells you what, we have managed to have an incredible early game for our Persian empire. We have so many cities, we have so much potential and we have like what I would consider to be actually a pretty viable target as a follow up in Phoenicia or actually it might even be better to go for the Ottomans because they're a little bit weaker. Plus they're kind of in a cage fight with Byzantium. I do think it might be good for us to go take out Phoenicia before they get too strong. Um, but yeah, I'm going to call that the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the trail of blood and destruction that we left in our wake with our cloven hooves. All right, I'll talk to you guys very much. Oh, sorry. I love you guys very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.